Hello everyone, and in this video I will compare Monzo versus Chase versus Starling and we will see the analysis, feature, spending limits, how to use their card abroad, their plans, the signing up and the conclusion of which solution is the best for you. But first please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. So without further ado, let's begin. Let's start from the analytics. With Monzo's free account, you score a cool Coral card. Meanwhile, Chase hooks you up with a no-cost account and a chill blue card without any numbers, while Starling's Soul and no-cost current account includes a stylish teal vertical card. Monzo and Starling don't have physical branches, yet with Starling you can handle cash at post office counters, something Monzo doesn't offer. What sets Starling apart is that it pays interest on current account's balances, offering a competitive 3.24% AR interest on balances up to £5,000. Chase and Starling operates without branches, with Chase exclusively having branches in US. As said before, Starling stands out by allowing you to handle cash transaction at post office counters, a convenience not offered by Chase. While you can deposit money at the post office with Chase, you do have the option to withdraw cash from ATMs. The Chase current account doesn't offer an overdraft option, but Starling and Monzo both provides the flexibility to apply for one. The interest rate you qualify for depends on your individual situation and credit score. Starling's overdraft interest rate starts at 15% AIR and in according to your credit score with Monzo. Let's see the feature. Monzo, Chase and Starling have similarities. For example, the mobile banking apps offer a wide array of remarkably similar features. They include spending categories that automatically organize your transaction into predefined groups such as grocery or dining out. However, Starling and Monzo both have a little bit more to offer. For example, with Starling and Monzo you can make international payment which is not possible with Chase. Whether it's your Chase or Starling account, you have the flexibility to receive your salary and set up direct debits. Both apps allow you to conveniently freeze or unfreeze your card and connect with customer service through in-app chats. With Starling, there is another perk. You can make international payments, a feature not available with Chase. Similarly, for Monzo, you can receive your salary set up direct debits and make international payments. Plus, you have the option to freeze or unfreeze your card and reach out to customer service, service through in-app chats. Who wins? Monzo. Monzo stands out in a subtly way. While the apps provide comparable features, Monzo apps visual have a slightly more engaging appeal. Now let's see the spending limits. Spending with both the Chase and Starling cards in UK is free and they both have the standard contactless limit of £100. You can easily link your Chase or Starling card to Apple Pay and Google Pay. Notably, Starling supports Samsung Pay, whereas Chase does not. While Chase customers can enjoy 1% cashback on card spending for the first year, capped at £15 per month, Starling does not offer any cashback incentives. In UK, spending on your Starling or Monzo card is free, and both cards share the standard contactless limit of £100. Adding convenience, you can integrate your Starling or Monzo card with Apple Pay and Google Pay. However, only Starling supports Samsung Pay. For UK ATM withdrawals, Starling provides unlimited free transaction, whereas Monzo allows free withdrawals up to £250 every 30 days. In this round, the winner is Chase. Chase is a bit ahead because in the first year, you get money back when you spend. Now let's see the used card abroad. Both Chase and Starling keep things simple when it comes to using your card abroad. They use the Mastercard exchange rate for foreign transaction and the best part is neither card charges you any extra fees. When it comes to withdrawing cash in a foreign land, both have your back without any fees but there are some limits to be aware of. Chase sets an, a monthly limit of £1,500 and once with that, no more withdrawals are allowed. There is also a daily cap of £500. On, on the Starling side, there is no monthly limit, but the daily cash withdrawal limit is a bit lower at £300. 
For purchases abroad, Starling and Monzo keep things fee free and they both rely on the competitive Mastercard exchange rate. Here's where is the travel tales different bit. With Monzo you get 200 pounds of fee of free overseas cash withdrawals every 30 days. After that, a 3% charge kicks in. If you are exploring Europe, there is a combined UK and EEA monthly free limit of £250 before the 3% free fee kicks in. Meanwhile, Starling takes the lead with no fees for any ATM withdrawals worldwide as many times as you need. The standard industry withdrawal limits of £300 per day applies whether you are at home or far away. And when it comes to spending overseas, both Chase and Monzo play the same games keeping it fee-free and using the solid Mastercard exchange rate. The winner, Starlings, takes the spotlight. While Starling and Monzo don't slap you with fees for using your credit card at shop or restaurant abroad, Starling completely free cash withdrawals worldwide are hard to top. Also Chase has low monthly limits. Now let's see plans. Both Chase and Starling keep it simple with a single personal current account, waiving off any monthly maintenance fees. If you are learning towards variety, Starling takes the lead by offering two JBP current accounts, while Chase allows you to juggle up to 20 accounts concurrently, including a maximum of 10 saver accounts. Now, when it comes to options, Starling goes the extra mile. Beside the personal current account, they throw in a joint account, business account and even a teen account. Plus, there is a kid card named Starling Kid, netly managed through the parent's Starling account. On the flip side, Chase keeps it more straightforward, offering just a saving account. Moving on to Monzo, they jump into the mix with free current account, the very reason you are here comparing. While Starling sticks to its single personal current account, Monzo spice things up with two premium options, Monzo Plus and Monzo Premium. Both Starling and Monzo share the lineup of joint accounts, business account and teens account for 16 and 17 years old. Starlings add a cherry on top with the inclusion of a kid card, Starling Kite, under the parents' management. Chase and Monzo align on the free current account front and that's where Chase bows out except for the linked saver account. Monzo, true to its trendsetter spirit, broadens its horizon with the introduction of not one but two paid for account, Monzo Plus and Monzo Premium. They also have joint account, business account and teen accounts for 16 and 17 years old, but the kiddos will have to wait for their own special account. Now let's see the signing up. Once you have jumped on the Starling train, Ordering your slick contactless Mastercard debit card is a snap through the app. Hang tight for 5-7 days and it should land in your mailbox. Chase mirrors this timeline, promising you'll have your card in hand within 5-7 to seven days as well. Now, if you are eyeing either a Starling or Monzo account, the process is swift through their mobile apps. No credit checks to fret about, just toss in a photo of your ID and a snappy selfie video. Most likely your account will see the light of day on the same day you apply. And yes, the card shipped for free dance their way to you in about the same time. Thinking about the Chase or Monzo account, the drill is familiar. Minutes on their respective mobile apps and here's the kicker, no hard credit checks. And here's the grand final. Both banks shower you with free cards, delivered with a bow, within 7 working days. Let's see the conclusion. Choosing between Chase, Starling and Monzo for your banking needs isn't a walk in the park. They both bring a ton to the table. With streamlined apps, fee-free global transaction and the safety net of FSCS protection, it's a tight competition. If we had to crown a winner, Starlight would take the throne. Why? Well, not only can you handle cash at the post office, apply for an overdraft, but the Starling app also flaunts a more advanced feature set, including international payments. But hey, what's a winner for one might not be the champ for another? If you're unsure, why not give a boat a spin and see which one suits your pipe? 
Starlink a solid choice, especially with its free post office cash deposit in the fee free global ATMs withdraw. Yet, if cash isn't your go to at home or abroad, that might not be your tipping point. And there we have it. If you find this tutorial helpful, please consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel.